Hello everybody. So I was asked if I would make a quick video on how I take data. And so what I've done is I've made a little legend up here at the top for you to see as a way to kind of follow along so it doesn't seem too foreign. And I will say that I learned this data collection process when I was working in a multidisciplinary school and everybody took data exactly the same way. So whether you were OT, PT, or a speech language pathologist, you took data the same way so that we could all read each other's data. So I'm just gonna go over what all of this means and how this works. So when you have a child who you're seeing for therapy and you're taking data on their, their performance in a session on certain goals, I use this particular legend at the top. So this top portion is what I was taught at the school. This bottom portion is how I've kind of modified to my needs as a speech language pathologist because this was not designed by an SLP, so a few things needed to be modified. So when I'm working with a kid, I always want to start with working at the goal level. When I'm at working at the goal level, you're only going to be using this top portion. So essentially what it looks like is you ask the kid a question or you prompt for the target, you know, so what is this or what is she doing, something like that, depending on what your goal is. So let's say you're working on increased vocabulary and you're working on food items with the child and you show them a toy pizza and you say, what is this? And the child does not respond. So what you have done is you automatically go ahead and put a slash down. This indicates that you have given one trial of that particular target. Whatever your goal level might be, so whether you're at a minimal verbal prompting or whether you're at um, maybe a tactile or a, a static or a transient visual, whatever the prompting level is, You'll know that based on your goal. So then you give that level of prompting. So let's say minimal verbal is the goal level. You give minimal verbal prompting and then the child gets it with the prompt. At that time, what you do is you put a slash the other direction. So one slash indicating I have targeted something, the child did not respond, a slash the other direction to indicate when they were given their prompt, then they were able to get the target. If you give the child the item and they do not respond even with their prompt, then you would leave it with this slash just this way. If you give the child the target and they do it independently, so you say, what is this? And the child says, pizza. You would say, great, we're just gonna put an I down. But let's say you're playing with the child and they pick up toy pizza and they just say pizza. So they've done this spontaneously. This is where you would put an S down in your data. These sorts of things I don't count in my full data collection unless I'm at the spontaneous level of if that's where the goal is written. But it's just so that you have an idea of how many times spontaneously the child is doing this task. And then that kind of gives you an indication of generalization skills. So are they generalizing this skill? Yes or no. So as you're going along and you're taking data, if you're starting to see that you have a lot of X's, so the child is getting the target every single time with the prompt, this indicates to us that we need to now step that child up, which means that we need to decrease our prompting because this is way too much help because they're getting it with a hundred percent in a hundred percent of opportunities. And so we need to bring that prompting down. So the way that I indicate that in my data as I'm taking data is if I have lots of X's across here and then I'm going to change my prompting level. So let's say for this particular section that this child is has minimal verbal and maybe a static visual, okay? So what I will do is I will maybe take away that static visual. So I indicate new data by either putting a slash like this or by bracketing off like I did up here. So bracketing off the data. So I'll say from here on, now I'm only gonna do minimal verbal and maybe I've taken away the static visual or vice versa, however you think a step up would look. So you might start to see the child might not get some, maybe they'll get a few others, maybe you know we'll kind of get almost like a new baseline here. Then once I have all that data, I kind of bracket it off in a way. So I know this whole section was not at the goal level. As a matter of fact, it was actually a step up from the goal. So I gave them less support because they didn't need as much support to get the target. 
On the other hand, if we're seeing a lot of these, so I'm, I'm giving the child lots of the target, I'm giving them lots of opportunities to produce the target, and they're not getting it. So this tells me that this child needs a step down. So they're going to need us to increase that prompting level because they're not getting it even with this support. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. So maybe I'm going to take them up to a moderate level of moderate verbal and their static visual because we want to keep them with that static visual, right? And then maybe we'll see, okay, now we're starting to get a little bit more. So they just needed some more help. And this is just dependent on your child and the goal because prompting levels, obviously that, that is very goal dependent. So you might need to give them a field of three or four. Maybe it doesn't make sense to move up to a moderate level of verbal prompting because you're just kind of repeating yourself. So be very cognizant of the type of prompting that you're using because increasing verbal prompting is not always the best choice. Think about your other types of prompting. So sometimes giving them that visual support or giving them that first sound for that phonemic cue is going to be a lot more beneficial than giving them just more verbal prompting. So just be cognizant of that. So the way that this would look, so let's take, we'll say we're doing this and let's say I'm trying to baseline. So it'll look when I'm baselining. The way I use this particular part here that I was talking about that I've modified for speech language pathology if I'm not super sure the level of prompting that my kid is going to need, as I'm baselining for my child, what I will do is just kind of write above. So let me make my pen a little bit smaller. I'll write above here, like this was a visual, this was a, like a, ta um, a transient visual, or maybe this one was moderate verbal, this one was a tactile, and maybe we'll do tactile for a few and the kid's getting it. And then maybe when I gave them minimal verbal, they didn't get it. So I'll write, you know, this section is minimal verbal and so forth and so on so that I can figure out for baselining purposes what is going to be the best level of prompting for this child. So that's where this top portion comes in where I can make notes for myself. And this is the little legend that I use. It makes sense in my own head. It might not make sense to you, um, but that would, that's what that means. So let's kind of do a little bit of a practice here and I will show how we do the data collection. So if this were your data, let me just put some down here. All right, so we have some data here. So in this particular example, what we have here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We have 18 trials total. Now, we're going to take this one out because it was spontaneous, so we'll change that down to 17. So 17 times that I asked the child to do something. This one was spontaneous. We just take it as a note. We can put it in the soap note that it was done once spontaneously. I wouldn't necessarily report this if it's only done once. If it's done more than once, I would report it. But one time, personally, I don't usually, I don't usually report that. So what I see here is one, two, three, four, five, six. So six of those 17 opportunities, the child was able to get it at the goal level. So this means that it was done at the goal level. So I gave them the prompt, I gave them the stimuli that I wanted them to do. They needed a prompt and then they were able to get it with the prompt. So this is gonna be about 35% of opportunities that they were able to do it with the prompt given. I would generally report this because I wanna know where they're at. The only time that I would report higher or lower is if it was much, much more significant, like a, a much bigger difference. So in here, this one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So only eight out of the 17 would be at that level that they just weren't able to get it at all. And only one, two, three, three out of the 17 were done independently. So this is what I would report. I would report at the goal level. Now, if for example, let's do a different example we have some data that looks like this instead. So we've got some here. All right, 
And what you can see here is that we have a lot more independence here. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So 21, oh, and again, we're going to take this one out. So 20 trials. And out of the 20 trials that this child was given, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 of them were at the level of independence. So in this particular example, we're looking at 55% of the opportunities the child is doing at the independent level. So this gives us some indication of that goal and whether that goal needs to be changed or not. So hopefully that is helpful. So just a quick recap on how this works. And I will say as I'm erasing and kind of setting up for the example, um, this did take me a little bit of time to figure out, but once I figured it out, I have never used a different data collection system since then. This is just so great. And what I have found is that children can't figure this system out um, because X's to them so frequently just mean that they did it wrong. And so when they're like, wait, I did that right, but you put an X, you just say something like, yeah, you're right, I did. So that's what I say. Um, I've never had a kid be able to figure this out, but I have had kids be able to figure out other data collection systems. So just as a recap, every time you give a trial for that child and they don't respond either, they don't respond independently, you're gonna make a slash. So for every time you've given them that opportunity, and they don't respond, you make that slash. But as soon as you give them the opportunity and then they don't respond, you give them the level of prompting that their goal allows. If they do respond accurately or correctly when they are given that goal level prompting, that's when you put a slash the other way. So indicating I have, tr I have introduced the stimulus to the child, they responded correctly with the, with the level of prompting. Anytime they don't respond, even with prompting, we're going to put that there. If we're stepping the child up or down, I put a line, indicate whatever level of prompting we're using that's changed. And then I go through and just go ahead and take my data this way. All right. So hopefully that helps. If you've got any questions, let me know. Um, I, like I said, I know it seems a little crazy at first, but once you get into the groove of it, it really is quite amazing um, how you're able to do this. And then as a quick side note, if I don't have pen and paper or my iPad in my pencil, so if I'm doing therapy, let's say on a playground, which I often do, I will use X's and lowercase L instead of that dash um, in order to be able to do this exact same system, but on my cell phone. So just going in the notes section and I'll put an L if it's been trialed and not done with the prompt and I put an X, lowercase X. That's what it looks like in my phone or just an I. The, the I stays the same, S stays the same for spontaneous. But that's how you could take it on your phone if you needed to type rather than actually writing down for those kids who are very active and you can't have pen and paper or an iPad and a pencil. All right, hope that helps. Hope somebody can use this.